Hey, check this out. YouTube was good with it, man. This is uh Failing Demand Podcast with your boy Flacco right here and my co-host, Big Toko, man. As you can tell, we got an interesting topic, man. Um, you know, we want to discuss about relationships, um, you know what I mean, as far as getting out as, as ex-cons and how difficult of a transition it is. If you're living in that right lifestyle, it's easy to get out, rip and run, see hella bitches, and do, do your thing out there. OK, but when you become a man, you're going in a whole different direction. You're trying to form a relationship. You're trying to form respect for your partner. You're trying to form those type of things. And I know something triggered my thought thinking process with Toko when he said something to, to me yesterday, because it's the same exact stuff I've gone on. that's gone on with me when I've entered into a new relationship. He said that he so, feels so distant from how to have a normal relationship because he's been gone so far and so long that he's going to let the woman pretty much take the lead. And I kind of have separate from that myself because um, I didn't get into any type of relationship till I got straight for about almost five years. I didn't date nobody. You know what I mean? I may, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't doing anything. My priority was to get myself right. And, um, you know, those are sometimes the things that are needed when you first come out. But when you're prepared and you think you're ready to date, it's a difficult transition because you're no longer the person you used to be. You're finding what you can potentially be in your true, authentic self. So everything is brand new again. You know, we know how to be in a relationship when we're out there as, as criminals, as far as gangsters and so forth, man. But as men, it becomes a difficult transition, man. You know, um, you know, you have different expectations now. You know, you're, you're not looking for like this, the, uh, you know, the same type of females that maybe don't have the same ambitions as you did in the past. You're looking at people who are more professional and classy and respectful, you know, and, um, you know, sometimes that could be a little bit, you know, it can make you feel a little bit timid, man, getting your feet wet in the, in the dating game. You know, I, I went through that personally, man. And to this day, you know, I'm married now, um, but I'm still learning, you know what I'm saying, in the process about how to be a man as far as a husband, how to be a partner, because the way I used to be. I was a very selfish individual as gangsters, as criminals. We're selfish because look at the actions that we take, you know, and I know Toko, man, uh, he's been out a couple of years now. He's, you know, you know, stuck his feet a little bit in the dating game and it's a difficult transition. It's not as easy as people think. So a lot of times people come out here and, and they're seeking things. They want to have a relationship. They want to have this and that, but there are, they can also be afraid if they're doing the right thing. Not everybody can easily adapt to the dating pool. Exactly. You know, it's, uh, it's funny. I'm all about discipline and taking care of what's in front of me, not really tripping on the future and not really looking back, <clears throat> especially when I was doing time. And when I came home a couple of years ago, the last thing on my mind was that, but you know, the more and more you change your life and you become responsible, you take on responsibilities, you either start to think about that or it just kind of is, you know, your life takes you in a direction where it's almost like those are the next steps. <laughs> oh, shit. And uh, you can find yourself overwhelmed, you know. Um, everybody wants to have somebody in their life, whether that's to hang out with, spend time with, booty call whatever it is in some form or fashion we always feel the urge to merge some of us are just more serious than others right but what do you do when you've been incarcerated for over a decade or for a couple of years a lot you know in this world every year is not the same man you know 12 months from now what flock and i are going to be talking about man is completely different we're going to look back on on this and it's going to be like damn you know Look at where we're at now and compared to then. And it's the same thing when it comes to trying to date. What you yeah. think was cool, how you used to talk and do whatever. You know, a lot of people got, you know, uh, walls up on their hearts. Understandable for their situations. You know what I mean? And my answer to that is, <coughs> you know, don't put yourself out there. Don't put me in the situation. If you're not ready, that's the first thing. If you ain't ready but you just want someone to talk to and be friends with of the opposite sex just to kind of test the waters, then you know what? All relationships are built on what? Honesty. What does a man or a woman always say? Just tell me what you want. 
right? Tell me what you want. And then you go from there. But it seems to be the easiest thing to say, but the hardest thing to do. So in the midst of all that confusion, you know, uh, a whole lot of things get thrown into the pot, you know, and you try to stir it up and it, and it overflows and it boils and you burn everything. And then you just, you know, you want to fuck everything and run, you know, basically because of that fear, F E A R, right. There's no recovery shit for you, but to, to, for me, it just, uh, it's always been the right time for me, but the wrong situation, you know, things I don't want to get into here. I've talked to Flacco about offline about, because it came down to my integrity. <clears throat> I have every right as a man, as a human being, if a woman wants to date me or talk to me, I should be able to talk to her and I can, it's my own free choice. But getting to know somebody and finding out and then when that honesty comes into play, sometimes it's not always on the man. Sometimes as a man who likes to date women, you know, um, the honesty can be life or death of the relationship or it can mean do i want to continue on because i'm a firm believer <clears throat> just like i was in my old life and now i have to make the final you got to give me you got to tell me what's up you got to give me you got to give me the game on what's going on and let me make my own decision don't blindside me with the truth after my feelings are all caught up and we've been dating for a while all of a sudden, oh, hey, I'm married. Oh, I got he's locked up, but or we have this open relationship. You got to be upfront and honest with that. Honesty goes the door. The door swings both ways when it comes to that. You know what I mean? There, there cannot be one catering to the other because then it turns into what? You're being selfish. You're not being honest. You want what you want and you want it now. And for yep. me, that's the that that's been the main thing. There's been, I met some amazing women, you know, but things you know my past isn't isn't the best and I'm not talking about what relationships because I haven't had many because I've been incarcerated most you know but the trust is the big thing for me you know what I mean and you know, uh, when you I know, love I love hard and I and I had to admit that to myself that I can get caught up in something and she might not feel the same and it's not her fault it's just on me maybe taking words too seriously or taking the kindness too seriously and it's no fault of my own. I was told about that, you know, when I was talking to somebody about that, it just means that you're ready and that you got to, you got to kind of slow down and go at a pace because even when you're dating somebody and you two like each other, you could be on different levels. One could already want to move in, you know, one could already want to jump in the sack and the other one's just like, you know, but you find that balance and you move forward and you become each other's best friend. That's what I, but what people have been telling me the last couple of years the ones that are in successful relationships that have that are men or women that have been incarcerated that are happy now they just said we started out as friends we weren't even thinking about this and then you know when we got to a certain level we crossed the line and you know it, it didn't you know the ground didn't open up the bush didn't start to burn nothing caught on fire it just happened naturally you know and then yeah. i asked well how do you know he's like you just know you just know when you end up in that situation Anytime anybody's told me they try to plan it, you know, it, it never really, or you try to push too hard, it never works out. You get frustrated, you know, and then you relapse in your mind, like, you know, how fuck you go back to those ways, like, I'm better off by myself, you know what I mean? And you, uh, you go back in that shell and you let the situation dictate your life again. And before you know, you're, you know, you're angry, you're pissed off because you, you felt that you got hurt or you went too fast, but hey, Sometimes we got to be told no. Sometimes we got to be told, hey, we're moving too fast or, hey, I'm not ready. That's all part of taking the chance. And that's all part of this thing we call living this new life. It's all part of it. The disappointments come all along with with all the good and the bad. You know, and if you can find some love at the end of the rainbow and someone to grow old with, then so be it. That's the goal that I have, you know. No, that's, that's a great goal, man. It's it's a difficult transition for, I think, anybody that, you know, lived our past life, man. And. For me, I think the hardest part, man, like that I know within myself is that I, I'll try hard, you know what I'm saying? But I try, I not, I haven't really been in any type of real relationships, which is not, which is nobody's fault. It just happened that way because I was, a, I was a criminal. I was a gangster. I was committed to other things. I was married before. We did things, you know what I'm saying? But at the same token, the other life came first. 
and be, even from the beginning, I let that be known. You know what I'm saying? And so now being a different person, you know, um, I know initially, I, you know, for me, I was I tried to make every right move and do everything right. That sometimes I would uh, uh, consume myself with trying to do the right thing. That if, if something went even a little bit wrong, it would affect me in return. You know what I'm saying? I feel like you know I'm I'm not uh, worthy enough, or you know what I mean that like I'm not living up to the standards I need to be, in, and I let it fuck with my head a little bit. You know what I'm saying? And so it, it's tough, man, to try to find that balance, like you said, man. And you know, to this day, I'm still learning to do certain things, man. And I don't. You know what I'm saying? I can't. I know how to be a righteous man. I know how to fucking defend someone's honor. I know how to do all that <laughs> shit. I have no hesitation to put everything first and foremost. But at the same token, I'm not a mind reader. My life has gone down a different path at times. So what's expected sometimes may be a little bit different. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. basically, I've always been one that's always been in control of the situation and all my relationships. I was very controlling. And, and today, I don't want to be that controlling person. I don't want to be the one that has to just always take charge because I want to respect my woman. But at the same time, I want to respect giving in return. I want to be like informed of what they want and, and their desires. I don't want petty shit to get mad at. So it's hard, man, because in the lifestyle we we lived in the past as convicts, man, there's no um, everything's everything is straightforward. Everything's black and white. It is what it is. There's mm -hmm. no fucking you. You're not put in a position where you have to assume what the other one's feeling. You have to deal with their emotions and so forth, because we have enough on our plate living that life as it is. That sometimes we used to block out all that stuff. And I think that my biggest issue I, I, I recognized in my past was this when I got out, right? Was that I put the same expectations that I expected in, you know, you know, everywhere. Like, okay, most places I went, I held some type of authority position, bro. You know what I'm saying? Off top, most places, you know what I mean? And so, there, therefore, I had the same expectations of respect that was supposed to be given to me in my past, okay? And I was very good. I'm very good with my verbal skills that fucking sometimes I would try. I, I wouldn't even realize that I'm manipulating my, my trying to manipulate my partner. You know what I'm saying? And they're not used to that life. So I'm putting expectations of what of, of what I'm feeling as far as, you know, prison politics and so forth, man, upon another person. And that wasn't just relationships. That was uh, work, work friendships and so forth, man. And that now, you know, I, I identified those things with everything when I got straight. And so now I'm like trying to relearn the right way. And sometimes I feel like, man, man, trying to learn the right way doesn't mean I'm always doing the right things. Sometimes I'm doing the wrong things. And I let it affect me more than it should, man. Instead of just letting it fucking just bounce off me and just, you know what I mean? There's times where I can deal with things. I think I'm, I'm, I'm taking the, you know what I mean? I'm dealing with things right. And there's times where fucking I feel like I'm beating myself up sometimes. And so, you know, for those that are getting out that are, you know, done some time or, you know, entering a new relationship and they're trying to live a life with sobriety or, or, you know, clean and doing the right things, man. You got to take these steps in relationships slow. You know what I'm saying? Transparency is always going to be key. Communication is always going to be key. Because just like you don't know what they're thinking if they don't tell you, they don't know what you're thinking if you don't tell them. You know? And there's nothing wrong with, like, you know, waiting till you're ready. I felt like after four and a half years, I was ready. Five years, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? You know, I put everything first, you know what I'm saying, like as far as my kids and, and everything else. I, uh, you know, I became unselfish, you know what I'm saying? And I wanted to enter a relationship to where I was the unselfish person as well. But I want to be appreciated at the same token. So now I'm married, you know what I mean? Um, you know, marriage is, is not always easy, you know what I'm saying? Especially with someone like me who's still learning the ropes, you know what I mean? Yeah. Where's my wife at? She here? I'll bring her on this shit, man. Um, hey, love you, babe. I know you're watching. But um, I'm learning still, man. I'm learning how to be the husband that, that, that other men have that before me were able to do, you know what I'm saying? But the thing about it, man, I noticed with those men that know how to be a husband, they're not really good men all the time. They don't have no integrity. They don't have the same type of loyalty and respect that we have. I don't think sometimes, just because certain individuals can do this and do that for a woman, right? Doesn't mean someone like me is not, I'm going to put my fucking heart into everything at any time. If You know what I mean? Especially if that loyalty and respect is shown in return. You know what I mean? I'm going to ride or die. It's, it's no half step. You know what I'm saying? You know, where a lot of motherfuckers are going to have step. You know what I'm saying? And, and, you know, they can sit there and say they're going to ride or die, but they're not. You know what I'm saying? So that's the type of di difference that you have is that not everybody's going to be on that same page of understanding. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to. You could be two different people. You don't always have to be have the same similar traits, but you have to have that balance, I guess, man. And, you know, this is a hard topic because it's one that I'm still learning about personally. Yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? Because, like I said, I've been, you know, in a relationship for two years now. I've been married for one. You know what I'm saying? It was at a long distance in the beginning. But those, you know, I paced myself. But then you get to a point to where, okay, I'm at this age. We're pacing ourselves. Either we're going to go all in or not. (laughs) You know what I mean? It happens at this age, bro. It's not like you're in your 20s and 30s, man. So I get what Toko said because me and Toko talk offline. And I think this is an important topic. And I want to touch on this aspect now. For those women that are dating people who are newly, you know what I'm saying, that maybe have have a past, you know what I'm saying, like Toko or some someone, right? Patience is going to be key, but you know what's going to be even more key is communication, transparency. You know what I'm saying? Because we we as convicts can take every anything that's thrown in our face if it's straight off top. But deviant, hiding shit and lying and so forth and 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 trying to put a, a, a false mask on is not going to sit right with us. You know what I'm saying? And especially if, 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 if a person starts to have feelings or emotions towards someone. You know what I mean? It's all bad. It's, it's a disaster ready to happen. And it's easy for an individual to just fall off. You know what I'm saying? So for like women, especially, you know what I mean? You got to be patient with a man that's done that type of time. You can't sit there and expect him to be like, you know, uh, uh, all these other guys. You know what I'm saying? Because we're different in different ways. Not in bad ways. But one thing about some men that have done time, either they're pieces of shits in their garbage or they're going to be the most loyal motherfucker you're going to meet. Yeah. There's no, there's no, there's no in between usually with, 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 uh, with that's con. So that's why you got to sit there and do your homework as well, man. So don't just think because a conflict comes out that he's going to be righteous and, and loyal because there's a lot of fucking piece of shit motherfuckers that, that are in prison, but there's also a lot of good dudes that have changed their ways and have built discipline and want the same things that a lot of times women want, but they don't realize, you know, they want to, they want to be respected. They want that loyalty. They want that friendship. They want that one person that's going to ride or die and rock with you. You know what I'm saying? A lot of motherfuckers are like that. Toko's like that. I'm like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, but we also have to find our place in a relationship. And that, I think that's key because you're taking on something that's been totally different when you've been instilled in a whole different life. And you're trying to apply it now in a new way and adjust to society. The same way you have to adjust to society as far as getting a job, you know, learning to you know pay your taxes, bank account, budgeting, and so forth is the same way you have to do in a relationship, except for the stakes are a lot more bigger. You know what I'm saying? And for us, yeah. we don't want to put our time and energy into to anything, especially after doing so much time. We don't want to put our time and energy in something that's not going to work. We want the same the same output that we put forth in return. You know what I'm saying? Because then it's easy for us to revert back to old behaviors. You know what I mean? Because then we start thinking, well, you know what, man? Fuck it. You know what I'm saying? I, I can't ever have a relationship. Fucking something's wrong with me. You know what I'm saying? You start to really, yeah. those type of wheels start turning in your head. You start to think that, man, maybe you're not uh, capable of having a normal relationship. Maybe I am just a gangster. Maybe I am what I am. That used to be a slogan before when I was out there in the streets. You know what I mean? I am what I, I am. am. What I am. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. You know, I used to say that to people. You know what I mean? Fuck it. This is who I am. You don't like it. Get the fuck on. You know what I mean? I, I, in my relationships, I was like that. You know what I mean? You know, and um, I didn't really have too many. They were all artificial. They were all shallow. Just like my friendships were. You know what I'm saying? Now I, I think I want to have everything that has more meaning. People that, you know what I mean, have the, the the same type of goals and aims as me and have the same things to lose. That's the key thing too, man, is I got to surround myself with people who have the same things to lose as I do. You know what I'm saying? If not, then they're not going to ever care about me the same way, I, the same way I'm going to care about them. You know? Um, but, you know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm learning that as a... After five years, it took me five years to start dating. Yeah. You know, it, it's a learning process, man. It, it's, it's, you know, I see room for improvement in myself. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes it's, it's, you know, it's even if we're, even if you've been out for years, you've never been a convict, fucking dating is going to be difficult. Marriage is difficult. You know what I mean? That's just the fucking reality of it, man. If anybody has a, a, a template or blueprint that works, man, fucking, man, share it. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. You know, you know, you get those, since you, since get, I, those, you I, get those, you get those. You get those Hollywood couples and shit. They're, they're all the cheesy smile. Yeah, like you know I mean, fucking, they, they're in the back room fucking fighting like five minutes later. Oh yeah, you got no idea what goes on behind closed doors, man. You know what I mean? It's uh it's it. You know, it's a. Uh, I don't want to say it's a sensitive topic, but it's a topic not a lot of people want to touch on because they want to keep their business to themselves. And it's this is just something that we've talked about on, offline, and a lot of people hit me up about it. You know, uh, they're going through stuff, or they they got questions. They want to know what's happening and. I've met a lot of, I got a handful of women that I'm really good friends with that I've met 
and uh, it just it just evolved into that. And the main thing that they say, you know, coming from their mouths when it comes to a relationship with either guys like myself and Flacco or just men in general, is that everybody thinks it's about money. It's about the honey. They want your time. You know what I mean? They want you to be home. They want you to pay attention. They don't want you to yeah, be I'm, on your yeah. phone texting playing video games, doing whatever, or just being, uh, man, back in the day, me, man. man. I'm over here. Man, you're <laughs> like, explaining to me. My wife's going to be like, see, see? Hey, check <laughs> this out, though. I want to touch on something. Yeah. This is where I made a mistake, and I want people to know, and this has nothing to do with relationships. When I started getting my life turned around, right, I isolated myself from people so much, so much, that I, I became okay with not really having any friends, not being close with people, being distance. And th yeah. that, you know what I mean? It changed me in a lot of different ways that were not that, that are not me, if that makes sense. Like for four and a half years, it was just about me and my kid because I went through that CPS situation, and, you know what I mean. And there were some rough there were some rough bumps that were going on with the, the you know what I mean. The, um, I don't like I'd like to put too much of my business, but with my son's mother, there was it was always a fucking headache, and um, you know um, I wasn't trying to date nobody, um, I wasn't trying to hang out with nobody, I wasn't doing anything, and then I became so fucking. Uh, um, isolated and i think that's a big mistake i think that's one era because if you notice on youtube sometimes i could just distance myself from everybody i could just pull yeah. on back and be okay and that's not always a good thing sometimes man like that's one of the biggest mistakes is i did not know how to forge friendships once i got clean and was doing right once my life changed the only way i knew how to be who i was you know what i mean flock at that time was being a criminal being a gangster being a dope dealer being a leader you know what i'm saying and illicit activities and illicit you know, operations. You know, now I'm someone totally different. You know I mean, I just didn't have the, I think because certain things I've seen were just disappointments all over again. I went through some rough shit, you know what I'm saying, as everybody knows. And then to, to go through betrayal and all that shit, I think I don't trust people. So I don't put myself in a position for people to fail me. You know what I'm saying? Because that's the worst thing you could have is for people to fail you. Because I'm like you, my emotions are really hard. And it's not just in, in uh, uh, relationships, it's in friendships. Like, you know, I expect if you're my friend, like fucking you're like a person's going to stand behind me and do the right thing regardless. Like if yeah. someone does something wrong that's uh, that's directed to me, I'm thinking I'm the type of person like someone does something wrong to Toko. I've kind of changed recently because of because of the experiences. Right. But say some, someone does something to Toko, I'm going to have Toko's back. Say even if it's someone that we mutually know, I'm going to be like, fuck that dude. That's how I've always been. Yeah. But you learn that not everybody's like that. And so it's yeah. you start to withdraw yourself because it's like, man, you know? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and you know, people are very selfish is where I'm, what I'm getting at, man. And, um, you know, it, there's no sense of loyalty like there was before. There's no sense of uh, uh, it's hard to force those relationships. So it's hard to trust people. And relationships are sometimes turn into the same thing, believe it or not. You you put if you, the biggest mistake you can have is putting expectations upon your relationship that this is what you expect in your woman. This is what you expect. It's like in recovery, you do your sexual ideal, you you put everything you want in the perfect woman, not their looks and body and all that, but as yeah. far as their character and stuff. And you know, you explain to your sponsor, you're like, look, in order to to have your sexual ideal, you have to be your sexual ideal. And no one can because we're not we're human and we're not perfect. And the sooner you realize like your wife, your spouse, your husband or whatnot is never going to be perfect is the more you're, you're more can be more acceptable to their flaws. You know what I'm saying? And that's going to be key is to, you know, what I mean, let your spouse or whatever utilize his strengths and let him find his balance to where he can compensate for his weaknesses. You know what I'm saying? Because if you're, anybody's looking for a perfect man or a perfect woman, it's never going to happen. We're human. We're always going to have flaws. We're always going to have faults. And I think fucking like, you know, having a past like we do, I, I know me personally, I try too fucking hard. You know what I'm saying? Because I wanted to be perfect. I wanted to be something different than I was in my past. So maybe I try too hard. You know what I mean? Because that's because you want to show that this is who you are today. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because there's enough people who judge you by, by your past. But you want to say, look, this is who I am. I'm not trying to cheat. I'm not trying to run around. I'm not trying to do anything. I want to be committed to you. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, we're we're almost about done with this topic. Any other feedback before we close this up? No, man. Just you know, be, yeah, this, here I got be one. Mindful, be, hey. be, be be mindful of your feelings, man, and uh, uh, be just be honest with yourself before you jump into anything. 
make sure it's the right situation. I know it's it's hard, but just revert back to you know how you used to do things and how you conducted and carry yourself. Just because you're changing your life, you gotta do an eight eight questionnaire in your dating, bro. Like you know what I mean? Like the same way you do it in the household, you gotta put up. Okay, I want your name. I want I want a list of all your previous spouses, right? (laughs) Yeah, you, I you want to know. You, you, I want to know if you you've did. been diagnosed with any type of mental disease, right? Have you had to do counseling or therapy? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you got to yeah, put a whole yeah. list of things. Yeah. Man, I'm serious, bro. I think now, I think if you fucking did what we do with our new arrivals, you know what I mean? Have a little fucking questionnaire and shit, bro. Fucking be that's why, that's why, process. That's why. I, that's why I can't do these dating sites, or I, 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 I won't even touch them, man. Because it's uh, that right mm-hmm. there to me is just like. You're leaving your front door open, you you know, and you leave all kinds of people hit you up and do whatever. And I'm just old school, man. If I can't meet you going to the store or going out, I got a joke. Whatever, man. It's, I, I I got a joke, right? Is. This is gonna make your ass laugh, right? So fucking my my um my brother goes, okay, man. He goes, you know, he goes go on Tinder. I didn't know what the fuck Tinder is. I was like, this is like before I said, I'll go check it out for the fuck of it, right? And he goes, all you do is just don't even look, just keep on swiping, right? Like so, I, I got it one day. I kept on swiping, right? I must have got fucking five matches of fucking some trannies, bro, that were hitting me up, bro. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. It's me. <laughs> I was like, motherfucking asshole. I disconnected the account the first day. I said, I'm never doing that again. I don't know why I did that. I just, you know what I mean? I heard about it. What's this Tinder? Like, you know what I mean, like, that was the thing, man. Like, I was seeing other people living life, and I wasn't trying to live life. You know what I mean, it got to that point where it's like, man, I think I was so scared about making a mistake and losing my kid or going back to jail or going back to my old ways. That I put a fucking bubble around myself from the rest of the world, bro. That's the fucking truth, man. I put a whole bubble around myself because I was fucking, I had anxiety. I was scared I was going to mess up. You know what I'm saying? Um, Yeah. You know, that life we live, man, affects everybody. You know what I'm saying? It it is what it is, man. I'm married now. I mean, I got a beautiful woman. I I mean, I got got more kids. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm going to try to do the best. You know, there's, there's times where fucking, you know, in life, things get hard. But um, I'm not a quitter. I'm always going to do the best of my abilities, period, man. And sometimes my best may not be the best that someone wants. So that's up to me to get my focus back you know, on track and always do do the, what's good. And that goes with anybody in a relationship. you got to take the good with the bad. You know what I'm saying? If your partner is struggling, you got to be there for them and vice versa. You know what I'm saying? If not, you're never going to have a working relationship. If you expect everything to be all fucking peaches and creams, it's never going to exist. You got to have, you know, the hardships, the agony and everything else, but you also got to enjoy the pleasant times. And you can't always look at everything in a ne- negative mindset because that negative thinking, negative attitude breeds what? Negative results. Anyways, yeah. it's your boy Flacco, Big Toco. We're talking about dating fresh out of prison, man, as convicts trying to become men. Hey, it is what it is. <laughs>